some really delay on my side because of some technical issues just give me a thumbs up if i'm live and if you can hear me properly can you please have a thumbs up if you can listen and hear to me properly So hi friends, good to have you with us. Just let me know if I am if you are able to hear me and see me properly. Okay, right. So, right. I'm see. Uh, okay. Hi, friends. Good to have you. I'm really sorry for a bit mess on my side because I think there was uh, some different video which was being shown. Am I uh, okay? So right. Okay. Now, now we are here. Just give me a thumbs up, web. I'm really, really sorry for wasting a couple of minutes uh, because there was a bit of tech issues. I mean, there was a different video which was opening and everything. I'm really, really sorry for each and everything. Now, let us start discussing about this particular thing. Okay. So right. So let us begin with the topic of today and let us have a discussion about the MCQs. Right. So what is the treatment of this particular disease? So a kind of a image has been shown to you on a particular slide. And what is this particular image is showing you? This is basically a colidocal cyst. And what exactly is you are being seen over here? So what is this? This is a Carolis disease. So what is this? This is a Carolis disease. So this is a Carolis disease. Why is it a Carolis disease? Because you get a characteristic central dot sign in here. Okay, so what are you seeing here? Central dot sign. What are you seeing in here? A central dot sign. So good to have someone of you. Right, so this is a central dot sign which you are seeing here. And this is a characteristic Carolis disease. Now, what is the treatment of this particular disease? If at all you have a Carolis disease which is a type 5 of a colidocal cyst, the treatment is transplantation. We have to go for a transplantation. So please understand, this is a Carolis disease. And what is the treatment of choice for this particular disease? It is a transplantation. Ideally, for the colidocal cyst, what we prefer to go for is, we prefer to go for excision and then we go for a reconstruction with the help of an intestinal jejunoanastomosis or something like that. But in this particular case, what is happening over here? Because the entire liver is filled with a small, small cysts. So we will not be able to go for a resection with an anastomosis. We cannot dissect the entire ear out, liver out. So we'll have to go for a liver transplantation. That is the answer in this particular case scenario. Right. So moving on uh, with the next particular question. So if the bleeding continues after a performing a Pringles manual, what is the source of the bleeding? So if at all you have performed a Pringles manual, what is the source of the bleeding? So what is the Pringles manual? So inside your kind of intestine, what do you have? You have your liver and then you have a intestine. Okay. So you have a liver and then you have an intestine. And what do you have in here? So you have a 
So what do you have in here? Okay, so you have a liver and then you have an intestine and in between this what you have? You have a ligament. So what is this ligament? This is called as a hepaticoduodenal ligament. Okay, so what do you have? You have a hepaticoduodenal ligament. So what happens with the hepaticoduodenal ligament? What goes inside this hepaticoduodenal ligament? We have a portal triad. So portal triad basically goes in this hepaticoduodenal ligament. And if you compress this portal triad, what will happen? The hepatic artery and the portal vein will get compressed. And if at all there is a bleeding from the liver the, and the source of the bleed is either the hepatic artery or the portal vein, if you compress this hepaticoduodenal ligament, the bleeding will stop. And this is what is the Pringles manure. So the question says if the bleeding continues after performing a Pringles manure, what is the source of bleeding? The answer is hepatic vein. What is the reason for this? Achha, what is the Pringles manure? It is a compression of the hepaticoduodenal ligament. By doing this, what are you doing? You are basically compressing the portal triad, right? Now, and what is the source of blood inside the liver? It is either the portal vein or the hepatic artery and then what is the blood which is going away from the liver it is a hepatic vein so there are three major vessels which are associated with the liver and if at all there is a bleeding in the liver it can be from one of these three vessels after performing a pringles triad you are compressing the two vessels and if at all the source of the bleed is two vessels it will get stopped but if at all the bleed continues it is a hepatic vein so it's a simple question but it's an important concept to note and if at all you have a bleeding which continues after the pringles manure the answer is hepatic vein Okay, right. Then moving on to the next particular question. What is the most common organism responsible for the emphysematous cholecystitis? So, what do you think is the answer to this particular question? Can you please tell me which is the most common organism responsible for the emphysematous cholecystitis? So, what is emphysematous cholecystitis? If after the acute cholecystitis there is a continued distension of the gallbladder and if at all the wall of the gallbladder doesn't uh, receive adequate blood supply what might happen ultimately the page the, the wall might kind of uh, develop ischemic changes so there can develop the ischemia in the wall of the gallbladder and ultimately it may become gangrenous and necrotic so gangrenous and necrotic wall can develop why this can develop because if at all after the acute cholecystitis if at all the distension continues the pressure will continue to rise and it will cause the ischemic injury to the wall of the gallbladder so the question is trying to ask you which is the most common organism responsible for this so the most common organism responsible for the emphysematous cholecystitis is it is a clostridium clostridium is basically the gas forming organism okay so this gas forming organism is the most common cause of emphysematous cholecystitis okay so did you get it now moving on if i just ask you on another question which is the most common organism responsible for emphysematous pyelonephritis so which is the most common organism responsible for emphysematous pyelonephritis can you please tell me what's the answer for this so can you please interact i'm really apologizing because there was a lot of technical issues today and then i logged into a different video and that's why i couldn't be there on the first one and a half minutes and that is the main reason why we don't have the live watches at this moment you are increasing now you're close to seven now but i really want to interact with you guys so can you please interact can you please tell me what is the answer to this particular question because the whole purpose of doing this kind of a thing is to make you guys interact make you guys dig into your brain and come out with the answers okay so all the information is definitely given in the books all i'm trying here is to revise things with you so can you please tell me what is the most common organism responsible for the emphysematous pyelonephritis can you please tell me that so the most common organism responsible for the emphysematous pyelonephritis is in fact e coli okay so what is the answer over here it is e coli it is not clostridium it is e coli so that is the difference please understand this right now moving on to the next question a child is brought to you on day one of life now this is a very very important question i want each one of you to attempt it please do attempt it a child is brought to you on day one of life with a non-bilious vomiting so patient is having a non-bilious vomiting and on x-ray what do you see you see a double bubble appearance so what are you seeing on the x-ray you are seeing a double bubble appearance 
what is the diagnosis so what is the diagnosis of this particular patient so double bubble appearance and a non bilious vomiting is it a duodenal atresia midgut volvulus annular pancreas or a non no, rotation of gut what is the answer can you please tell me what is the answer guys so answer to this particular question is if you say the answer is duodenal atresia you are wrong that is not the answer so answer to this particular question is annular pancreas now why see understand one thing double bubble appearance is associated with both duodenal atresia as well as annular pancreas do you understand do you get it right so this question looks very very simple and the moment you see double bubble appearance i am sure many of you would have said duodenal atresia like so good that you have answered so imran and indrani has answered you are saying that it's a duodenal atresia that's not true okay why it's not true because that's a wrong answer so please understand what did i tell you double bubble appearance is associated with both duodenal atresia as well as annular pancreas but please understand the basic difference is what kind of vomiting so here there is a day one of life non bilious vomiting so non bilious vomiting is associated with annular pancreas if it was the exactly the same question and in in k uh, rather than having a non bilious vomiting if it would have had a bilious vomiting so if it would have been a bilious vomiting so bilious vomiting is associated with duodenal atresia then the answer would have been duodenal atresia please understand everything same non bilious vomiting annular pancreas every other thing same bilious vomiting duodenal atresia so such kind of questions do come in need and by the knee jerk response what do you say you say that your answer is duodenal atresia and you commit a mistake so please understand the answer here is annular pancreas important very very important now the last question for today is which of the following is the most common genetic mutation for the carcinoma pancreas okay so which of the following is the most common genetic mutation for the carcinoma pancreas whoever is watching can you please attempt and can you please tell me what is the answer over here so which of the following is the most common genetic mutation in the carcinoma pancreas then the answer over here is keras okay so what's the answer over here okay so answer is keras so the pneumonic is basically crap okay so the most common mutation is keras followed by p53 or 16 please understand followed by p16 please understand p16 is the one which is associated with carcinoma pancreas p53 is not so the most common is keras followed by p16 important mcq a repeat mcq asked so many times please understand okay good so this was all about today it was a very very short session i completely agree with it and it was not a very very planned session i completely agree with it the reason being there was a bit of a technical issues i basically miscalculated the time and i basically logged into some another video for screaming and that is why the first one and a half minutes were not kind of messy okay so i hope you kind of added some value with this i try to add a value on your life using this particular thing if you're not please follow me in an academy you will have a good time there we have a lot of free sessions which are going on if you have any doubts related to an academy i'm still online for a couple of minutes you can definitely ask me and i'll be more than happy to answer it if at all you want to join any of the course on the an academy it is dr.pawan you can use this promo code uh, at this moment one year subscription is being given at uh 22.5k if you use this promo code so original cost is 25k it will get reduced down to 22.5k if you use this promo code and the 6 month subscription original cost is 20k it will get reduced down to 18k if you use this subscription okay thank you so much if at all you want to join please do consider using my promo code if you have any doubts please do ask me i'll be more than happy to take up doubts I have already explained what happens on an academy a lot of times, even today and the yesterday. If you have any doubts, please do ask me. Consider having a look at the videos all about an academy part one and part two. I have already covered it on our YouTube channel. You will have a fair idea about how exactly things happen on an academy. If you have any specific doubt, please do ask me. If you have any specific suggestions, please do put up on the comments. I will make sure that I implement it and I, we as a team try to work on it. Okay. So thank you so much for joining with me today. If you have any doubts, please do ask me. I'll be here for online for a couple of minutes. You can ask me if you want. Okay. So it was a five simple MCQs which I talked about. Question number four. It is very very important. Please make sure it looks very very simple, but it's an important MCQ. Okay. So I don't think you have guys have a doubt. Thank you so much for joining with me today. It was indeed a pleasure. And see you soon. Today again I have another session at 12:50 or 12:30. So hope to see you there. 
yeah do come and attend that particular session it is again based on the hepatobiliary system and it will be a more systematic session so at 12:50 you can come and join me on uh, on this particular youtube only thank you so much for watching and have a great day bye happy studying guys